listening to the international hit show, The Baby Names Podcast. And here are your hosts, the Moss Sisters. I'm Jennifer Moss. And I'm Mallory Moss. And we're the founders of babynames.com. And you know what? We're sisters too. We are, and I can't do anything about that. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, so first, I want to do a correction from the last episode, Names from Big Brother. Our listener, Carrie Bates, emailed us and let us know that Jessica Graff and Cody Nixon's baby Maverick is a girl. So sorry, Jess and Cody. Sorry that we made that mistake. But you know what I think is interesting, especially about the name Maverick, is that I always thought that Cody reminded me of Tom Cruise. And Maverick is Tom's character in Top Gun, which he's resurrecting now for Top Gun Maverick. Mel, what do you think about Maverick for a girl? You know, I'm not really fond of it. I do appreciate that it's a strong name for a female, but it just doesn't do it for me. However, you could always call her Maeve, M-A-V-E, which is kind of cute. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. At first, I was like, what? But then I was like, yeah, it's not so bad, Maverick. It's a pretty name. Anyway, so thanks, Carrie, for that correction. And at the top of every show, we always go over interesting names we found since the last episode. And I'll go first. I met a woman this week named Lucretia, L-U-C-R-E-T-I-A. It's a Latin name meaning wealth from the same word root as lucrative. Now, Lucretia has been more prevalent as a name in the Spanish-speaking cultures, but the woman I met was Caucasian. What do you think? Well, speaking of strong women, Lucretia Borgia was certainly one of those. Mm. Here's a plug for the miniseries, The Borgias. I really enjoyed that one. I heard good things about that. I haven't started it yet. Oh, do it. It's very good. Anyway, one of our Facebook group members is named Davlin or Davlin. I think that is really pretty. It is clearly a combination between the names Dave and Lynn. Jen, don't you have friends with those names? I do. I'm going to do a shout out later to them because they just had twins. Um, I think that's okay, but I just want you to realize that many couples share Facebook accounts, so that could be one of those. And I probably wouldn't go by Facebook for first names because of privacy. Many people just make them up. But if there is a Dave Lynn out there, let us know. And if that's your name, that's cool. Yeah, I agree. Let's start a trend. Let's start a trend. And please don't share your Facebook account. It's just hard to connect and communicate with someone when you think their spouse is reading it too. And you know what? I just have to say that if our parents shared their shared their account, they'd be pick it on. <laughs> pick it on. <laughs> It sounds like a mythological creature. It does. <laughs> okay, so our topic of the week is French names. Non Francaise. And you're going to have to bear with me with my French. It's really not good. Yeah, because that would be non Francais. So the first time I went to France was with my then husband, but we were piggybacking off of your honeymoon, I believe. We met you there, right? After you did your honeymoon in the Loire Valley. Yes, you did. You did. Yeah, and that was fun palling around. And the second time I went to France, I took my daughter and we did both Paris and Provence because I wanted to go to Arles, which is one of the places where Van Gogh stayed and did a lot of his famous paintings. And that was really awesome. What about you, Mel? Well, like you said, the Loire Valley is the place to see all the castles. I had a chance to stay in a chateau, plug Domaine de la Tartiniere, in a turret room and it was very romantique. I'm also a sucker for Paris. I love the Louvre, the Tuileries, and even the old standby, the Eiffel Tower. I haven't been there in 20 years, but I would really love to go back. Now, I loved Versailles, too, and I have a famous photograph that I got blown up of Marie Antoinette's playhouse because it's so huge, and it was was her playhouse so she could pretend she was a peasant, and she had ducks and pigs, and, you know, she wanted to know what it felt like to be a peasant, which kind of just showed you the, the separation at the time of the rich and the poor. 
Let them eat cake. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give you a little background on the history of naming in France, because I think that's pertinent. In the beginning, Gaul was the territory consisting of what is now France and surrounding countries, and it was inhabited by the Celts. And that's where the word Gaelic came from, Gaul. And I don't know how the Celts then got up into the UK, but we're not historians, so I'm not Mm going to go into that. (laughs) Then Julius Caesar went and decided to conquer Gaul in 58 to 54 BCE. The Roman Empire enforced their own multiple name system on the Gal that we learned about in the History of English Names episode from Kevin Stroud. The Romans had a given name, a second name, which was their family name, and then their last name was a nickname, like the redhead or the guy who makes shoes. After a while, though, the Roman naming convention kind of faded away in Gaul, and then by the 10th century common era, most people only had one given name. But then, like England, when the population increased and travel and trading became the norm, it was confusing to deal with a bunch of guys with the same name because you couldn't differentiate them. For instance, Jean, Jean, hey Jean. Hey Jean over there. No Jean over there. Not you Jean, that Jean. That's right. Even with nicknames. So people started taking surnames like the English. They came from where you lived or what you did for a living or what you looked like. But in 1474, King Louis XI (laughs) changed all that. He decided that his people cannot just add any last name they wanted willy-nilly. All name changes to be vetted by the king. And then three kings later, King Francois was the next ruler to make big changes in French naming law. In 1539, he asked the church to start recording the population like a census, making that one of the first written records of French names. That was called the Ordinance of Vieux Cotteret. These registers were mandatory for everyone of the Catholic faith and included the documentation of baptisms. In the baptisms, they had to record a personal name and a family name. However, there were no name spelling rules. So in 1539, family names became mandatory for every Catholic family in France. Now, with the French Revolution, the registration of births were applied to everyone, regardless of faith. Aristocratic surnames also suffered changes with the revolution, as many of the nobles after the revolution or during it wanted to kind of lay low. So they modified their family names to sound less aristocratic. For example, the deposed King Louis XVI became Louis Capet. Oh, wait a second. Aren't you the terrible King Louis XVI? Do I want to decapitate you? Nah, nothing to see here. I'm just, oh, Louis Capet, move on, move on, peasant. That was really terrible, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of the movie History of the World Part 1 by Mel Brooks. The servant said to Mel, Sire, the peasants are revolting. And he responded, you said it. They stick on ice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, that brings us to Napoleon Bonaparte, who made his own name law. In 1803, he decreed that French babies could only be given names of Catholic saints and, quote, important people of the ancient world. That meant there were a lot of Jeans, Michels, and Valeries. It's a fascinating read, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you can Google the Law of 11, Germinal Year 11. We'll link to it in the show notes. So that was until 1993 when President Francois Mitterrand did away with it. Parents are now free to choose any name for their baby as long as it's not detrimental to the child. Yeah, so in 2000, a couple with the surname Renault, like the car, were forbidden from naming their new daughter Megan. Even though Megan, French form of Megan, is a pretty common name in France, but they were blocked because her full name, Megan Renault, was a model of the car by the car manufacturer. Uh, the parents eventually took the case to court and they won. Traditionally in France, a child was given the surname of his father, or her father, a patronym, and if he was an illegitimate child, he could be given the surname of the mother, 
a matronym. Mm. But in 2003, a law enabled parents to freely choose the surname of their children and women to not have to take their husband's name. That's only 16 years ago. I know. That's crazy. And in 2013, they decided that if parents disagree about a surname, I don't know if that ever happens, but I guess so, the child is given both surnames hyphenated in alphabetical order. I'm saying you're having a lot of trouble if that's an argument. Try and take care of that before you get pregnant. Well, they might not be married or together, so you don't know. So now in France, anyone can apply to a change their name, but it's not easy. You have to make an official request to the Journal Officiel and the Departmental <laughs> Special <laughs> Office of Publicity, whatever that's called. Okay, you can tell I just gave up. If it's accepted, it goes to the Minister of Justice or the Prosecutor of the Republic. The request will only be accepted if the reason is legitimate. It can be because your current name causes you trouble, someone else has your name, someone famous or infamous, or get this, if the name sounds, quote, too foreign. So that's the history of naming en France. So let's go over the top baby names in France. And because the episode is French names, we're not only talking about France, but we'll compare the list to the top baby names in Quebec as well. Yeah. Now we're going by the top names in France in 2017 because that's the latest statistics that we have. Mm -hmm. And I'll read off the girls' top 20, which I think are really interesting. Emma, no surprise there. Everybody's name is Emma. Doesn't matter where you live. Okay, so Emma, Louise, Jade, Alice, Alice. Chloe, Lena, Mila, Lea, Manon, which I think is beautiful. Me too. Rose, Anna, Inez, Camille, Lola, Ambre, A M B R E, Lena, Zoe, Juliette, Julia, and Lou. Lou. L O U. I like Lou. <laughs> Okay, you do the boys. Lulu. Okay, the boys are Gabrielle, Louis, Louis. Ra Raphael, Jules, J U L E S, Adam, like Adam, Lucas, like Lucas, Leo, like Leo, mm. Hugo, like Hugo. It is Hugo. No, it's Hugo without the H. Is sound. it Hugo in France? There's not, you don't sound the H, I believe, okay. when it starts the word. Okay. Arthur, but like Arthur, Nathan, like Nathan, Liam, where'd that sneak in? Ethan or Ethan, I guess. Mael, M-A-E-L with a doodly over the E. <laughs> well, I want to say umlaut, but that's German. No, it's not an umlaut. Yeah, that's interesting, Mael. I have to look that up. Yeah. Paul, Tom, Sasha, Noah, Gabin, G-A-B-I-N. Wouldn't it be Gabin? Gabin. You're right. There's no E on the okay. end. Good job, yeah. jean ah, There I go. Wah, wah, wah. No, Nolan and Enzo. Oh, no, you're right. So I like Nolan. Enzo, interesting, is an Italian name. So that's been adopted by the French. A top 10 name. I mean, top 20. And I want to say that number 21 is Muhammad. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of cultural crossover there, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. Yeah. Um, then down the list, what are some of the names that stuck out to you, Mal? Well, I also liked Enzo for boys. Yeah, that's so cute. Gabin or Gabin, G-A-B-I-N. Kind of, and you could call him Gabe. Leo, Leo, Hugo, <laughs> and Noe, N-O-E. Noe, yeah. That's kind of a... Oh. French um, version of Noah. Well, that's kind of cool. It's yeah. different. Noah. Yeah. For girls, I like Lena and the ombre because it's kind of like O M B R E, except for it's A M B R E. Yeah. Luna. Of L O U N A. <laughs> Where's she on the list? Luna's. Oh, thir 36. I see it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, but this is an, a variation of Luna with an O U. And you could call her Lulu Juliet. Mm -hmm. Like Romeo and, and Lilu, L-I-L-U. I really like that. That's name. cute. Now, I notice on the girls list, there's, um, we were talking about Mael, that we were going to look that up. There's Mylis, M-A-E-L-Y-S. So that appears to be the female form of Mael. I like Capuchin. Capuchin? 
Cappuccine. It's like the coffee drink. I think that's really pretty. Thea, T H E A. Victoire, which is Victoria, but in French. Alice. Apolline, which is like Apollo or Apollonia. Apolline, A P O L L I N E. That's a really cool name. But my last favorite female name, Z E L I E. Zeli. That's kind of cute. And I'm just looking down, and number 51 for girls is Anais, A N A I S, like the writer. Now, some of the cool boys' names under 20 are Gaspard, G A S P A R D. Then there's Liam, L Y A M, which is interesting. That hasn't hit the U.S. yet. There's Marceau, as Marcel Marceau. There's Malo, M-A-L-O, like your name. Malo. And Ismael, Naim, N-A-I-M. And then there's some that really match the U.S. lists, like Owen and Milo and Oscar and Liam. Axel is in there at number 28. So it's interesting how I think, and I think this is like the influence of the internet is how everything is so like international Mm -hmm. now because they have access to the u.s baby name lists and pop culture and everything it's um the names that are propagating more around the world one of the things i'd like to point out too about french names is that there are many variations how do i say similarity names If you put an E on the end of a male name, it becomes female. And so there's a lot of names just like that. Yeah. Clement, C-L-E-M-E-N-T, and then put an E on the end and it becomes female. Or Augustin, put an E on, it's Augustine. Now, as you may suspect, once we go to Quebec, there are some traditional French names, but they're more similar to the top names in the U.S., So I'll go over the top 20 girls in Quebec, and the latest list we got for this is 2018. So it's a little more current. So there's Emma, number Mm -hmm. one. Alice. Alice. And she was over on the French list as well. Olivia. Leia. Charlie, which we talked about as being more prevalent for girls now in the U.S. as boys. Florence. Charlotte. Livia, Zoe, Beatrice, or Beatrice, Chloe, Eva, Rosalie, Romy, Rose, Victoria, Clara, Juliette, Jade, and Mia. So it's kind of like a mishmash between the French list and the U.S. list. Yeah, and I'd like to point out is that the top 20 boys in Quebec are very, uh, I don't want to say American, but English. Right. Um, much more than the girls. So William. A couple of French influence in there, Oh, though. definitely. William, Logan, Liam, Thomas, Noah, Jacob, Leo, or Leo, Felix, or Felix, Edouard, spelled E-D-O-U-A-R-D, Nathan or Nathan, Emile, E-M-I-L-E. Very French. Raphael. Alexis, ooh, for a guy. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Samuel, Charles, Victor, Adam, Olivier, V-I-E-R, Antoine, and Gabriel. Or Or Gabriel. Yeah, so you can see it's kind of like a mix between the more American names, but also there's like Raphael and Emile in there, Mm -hmm. Antoine, which is really interesting. So let me talk about some of the girls list that are under number 20. Ophelie, O-P-H-E-L-I-E, which Mm. is a French form of Ophelia. I think that's beautiful. Elodie, E-L-O-D-I-E. Ocean, O-C-E-A-N-E, like ocean with an E. That's gorgeous. I love that name. So there's such cool names that you can get inspiration from that really haven't hit the U.S. yet. Eliane, E-L-I-A-N-E. Delphine with a P-H. And then one more, Clemence, C-L-E-M-E-N-C-E. Okay, now you do the boys. I also like the pronunciation or the spelling of 
Eleanor, E L E O N O R E. Oh yeah. Or Eleanor. Yeah. Eleanor. The boys, boring, 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 boring. Jaden, boring. Jackson, boring. Um, but I see. But look Lee. how they spell Luca. L O U K A. I like that. And interesting. Then, yeah, interesting. <laughs> and then Henri, H E N R I, Hubert, H U B E R T, Laurent, L A U R E N T, Matisse. M-A-T-H-I-S. And they also have the Y Liam spelling, L-Y-A-M. Mm. I wonder if that's going to hit the U.S. Maybe after the podcast it will. Maybe, but I don't like it. And they have Hugo. Enzo is at 84 in Quebec. Maverick is sitting there at 92 for boys. Interesting. Mm. Etienne, which is, I mm. believe, Stephen. Yeah, it is a French form of the name Stephen. It means crown. What's Loik? L-O-I-K. Loic? Loic? Yeah, I would think so. So not only is it like a combination and, you know, names are propagating around the world, but I think it's cool that Quebec is also keeping its tradition in French naming, too. Okay, so going to surnames, and the only data I could find was from Ancestry.com, and that is the top surnames up to 1990. So this is pretty old, but it might still apply. We've got Martin, which is after the French Saint Martin of Tours. Bernard, which is a patronymic name from the given name, which is of Germanic origin, meaning bold as a bear, Bernard. Thomas, from the medieval given name, uh, meaning twin. Petit, which means small or little. There's last names in the U.S., small and, and little. Robert, Ricard, Durin, Dubois, which is a geographical name for people living near the woods because it means of the wood. Moreau, which means dark-skinned, literally son of the moor. And Laurent, which is a geographical name from the Roman surname Laurentius, which meant from Laurentum, which was an ancient Roman city. Hmm. So now time for our favorite French names. Mal, what are yours? Babette, Juliet, Lilette. I really love the et names, as you can see. And now that I've heard of... L-O-U-N-A, Luna. I have to add that too, because Lulu is such a cute nickname. Yeah, I think that's what dad called you. That's why you like it. He called me Lulu Bell. Oh, yeah, right. So I've always loved the name Marie, M-I-R-E-I-L-L-E. She was one of the main characters in one of my favorite books called The Eight by Catherine Neville. And I also like the actress Marie Enos from Big Love, The Killing, and The Catch. She is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so for boys, I like, well, I've discussed this before, Guy, G-U-Y. And from looking at the list, I think Maxence is pretty cool, M-A-X-E-N-C-E. -E. It's a great alternative to Max or Maximilian. Definitely. So that is French names. Write us and let us know if we missed some or what your favorite French names are, and we'll read them in the next episode. Please do. And now it's time for Celebrity Baby News. <laughs> Actor and TV host Mario Lopez announced the birth of his third child with wife and Broadway dancer Courtney Matza. Matza. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> it's like matzo ball soup but it's M-A-Z-Z-A. -Z -Z -A. <laughs> they had a baby boy whom they named Santino Raphael. Little Santino joined sister Gia Francesca, who's nine, and bro Dominic, who's five. I like Gia Francesca. I do, too. The name Santino is Italian, of course, and it means little saint. All right. Well, actress Amanda Fuller, best known for her roles as Kristen on Last Man Standing and Battison on Orange is the New Black, is expecting a baby boy with husband Matthew Brian Feld. Ooh, Battison is so bad on that show. <laughs> Amanda shared an adorable selfie on Instagram and revealed via a hashtag that she is 22 weeks pregnant. Amanda considers this her miracle baby after doctors told her it would be impossible to conceive due to chronic illness and endometriosis. Mm. She hasn't revealed what the chronic illness is, but we wish them all well. 
Definitely. After struggles with infertility, today's show co-host Dylan Dreyer has revealed that she is expecting baby number two with husband Brian Fichera. The baby will join their first son, Calvin Bradley, who was born in 2016. And speaking of infertility, I want to do a shout out to my BFFs, Lynette and Dave, who also struggled with conceiving for 15 years. And on the 4th of July, Lynn gave birth to two little ones, a boy and a girl, after doing an experimental implantation. They are over the moon and they're still finalizing names with me as the consultant so I can't say what they are just yet but I can't wait to meet them in September and I hope that gives hope to the couples out there who are trying. Jennifer what do you think about couples who take their time in naming the baby after they're born? I have no problem with it you know every state has a time frame in which you can file the name and what they did is they filed them as baby girl and baby boy and then they just have to go to Cook County because they're in Cook County and change the names oh okay yeah so they're officially right now baby girl and baby boy (laughs) (laughs) well someone on our Facebook suggested Liberty and Bell yeah sorry Facebook (laughs) happen. They are considering George, though, which I think is really cute, you know, for George Washington. Well, I like Mira, M-I-R-A, for Miracle. Oh, I like that. Yeah. See, I can come up with good names, too. You can. Well, actor Michael Sheen, best known for his roles in Masters of Sex, Frost Nixon, and The Queen. Who did he play in The Queen? Uh, Prime Minister. Oh, okay. Oh, he's cute. Has revealed that he's expecting his second child with girlfriend actress Anna or Anna Lundberg. The pregnancy announcement comes just two months after it was revealed that the couple was romantically linked. Michael has a 20-year-old daughter, Lily Mo, with his ex-wife actress Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. I didn't know Kate was that old. And I have one more shout out. An important shout out to our new celebrity baby blogger, Kate Fan, who's doing an amazing job gathering and reporting on all of these stories on our celebrity baby blog on babynames.com. One recent post you don't want to miss is the Baby Bump Summer Roundup, all the celebrities who are showing off their bellies this summer. Just go to babynames.com and click celebrities in the menu. Oh, Are you a fan of Kate? I certainly am. I'm a Kate fan. (laughs) All right, good. Kate, welcome to the Baby Names family. And now it's time where we take letters from you, our listeners. So, Mal, why don't you take the first one? Okay. Hello, Moss Sisters. I've been listening to your podcast for a while now since the pregnancy and birth of my daughter, Veronica, yay, Grace Bradley. I absolutely love your themes and lighthearted fun, but I have to say you disappointed me on your recent episode about color names. You didn't include my name, Iris. I was surprised as it had gained popularity with the new generation in its meaning, play of colors or rainbow. You know it's the name of a flower, but also the colored part of your eye. I positively love my name as I think play of colors has always described my personality. I also had to ask you for your input on names as my husband and I are thinking about having our second child within the next year. My husband has a thing about the name being a power name and or pronounceable saint name as we are Catholic. Thus, where we got Veronica, I love the name Veronica. Does anyone know whose name is Veronica? It's my daughter. Now, he's explained power name to me as a name derived or given to royalty. What I really want are the names of all our children to seem to flow. So I don't want Veronica, Boo, Diane, Constantine, and Beckett. So what are some of your favorite names that would make a good family theme of power names? I like Ambrose and Philip for boys. Ambrose. Girls, I like Eleanor, Claudia, Louisa, and Esther. Thanks. Well, it's hard for me to suggest Eleanor because that was our grandma's name, and I have such a strong association with it. Um, What do you think? I love the name Eleanor. Really? Yeah, I do, actually. As far as what I think of the names... 
I do not like Esther, although it's certainly a biblical name, and I tend to like biblical names. I like the name Philip because it reminds me of Hamilton. That was his son's name. So Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton sing to their children, and Philip is one of them, and I think it's really beautiful. And I really like the name Louisa. So I'm looking at Catholic saints' names and some more unusual ones. Balbina. B-A-L-B-I-N-A, although I'm not sure that would fly. Um, but I do like Alodia, A-L-O-D-I-A, and Phoebe. Audrey would be a nice alternative to Claudia, although I do like Claudia too. I think that's really beautiful. And I have a very good friend, she's like a sister, named Bernadette. And that is strongly associated with St. Bernadette of Lourdes. And it means brave as a bear. So how much stronger can you be? As for boys, Crispin, as in Crispin Glover, St. Crispin is, is a patron saint of tanners, couriers, and cobblers. Andrew is a very strong name. I think it even means man or manly. There's also Bryce. That's a saint name. It is. Believe it or not. Yeah. And Cornelius. Now, that might not sound so strong, but he was a third century saint and a pope. I think my favorite is Bryce Bradley. Bryce Bradley sounds really important. Okay, so I hope we helped you, Iris, and thank you for suggesting your names for our color names episode, which was number 33, if you want to check it out. All right, next letter. Hi, what do you think about the name Solace as a middle name? I'm pregnant and we don't know if it's a boy or girl yet, but if it's a girl, we are thinking of either Anna Solace Katzenberger or Nadia Solace Katzenberger, and she spells it S-O-L-A-C-E like the word. Both Anna and Nadia are Eastern European, which is a hat tip to my Ukrainian heritage. But is Solace too hippy-dippy? For a boy, our current choice is Ansel Riskus Katzenberger. Riskus is my great-grandfather's Lithuanian surname. Input is appreciated. Sincerely, Meredith Katzenberger. Well, I think you should name your baby Mallory Katzenberger. <laughs> <laughs> Mallory Solace Katzenberger? What do you think about Solace as a middle name? I think why not? I know. You know, again, middle names, they're just not as important. And I think if you like the name Solace, or you could even pronounce it Solace, as a middle name, I think it's beautiful, actually. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful name, too. And then Nadia Katzenberger or Katzenberger, I think is pretty. I like Nadia better than Anna or Anna. And I don't think Solace is too hippy-dippy. And even if you think it is, it doesn't matter. It's if you like the name, do it. Go for it. I also want to say that solace, the definition of solace as a word, means comfort or consolation in a time of distress. So that's a beautiful meaning as well. It is. Ansel or Ansel Riskus Katzenberger. You know what? Again, with the Riskus, it sounds a little strange, but it's a Lithuanian surname and there's absolutely no reason not to use it. I agree. And, you know, middle names is a great place to put family names or hereditary names or names that you're not quite sure about, but you really want to use. Like, I'm not sure I would recommend Riskus as a first name, but no. as a middle name, that's perfectly acceptable. Absolutely. And I like Ansel. I have the association with the famous photographer, Ansel Adams. Mm -hmm. um, I live near Yosemite, and he did a lot of work there. So I have kind of an affinity to the name Ansel, and Ansel Katzenberger is perfect. You know, because you have a longer last name, you have to keep the first name simple so it's not overwhelming to the child as they grow with it. And I think you did a great job in picking both names. As opposed to Anna or Nadia, I like both of them as well. And I'd say go with the one that you and your partner love the most. Yep. So that's it for the show. I am super psyched about the next episode topic. Okay, can you stop with the French <laughs> accent now? Which is horrible, by the way. <laughs> okay. Well, tune in in a couple weeks when we will gab about names from STEM. That stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And I promise it'll be more interesting than it sounds. 
totally my wheelhouse. I can't wait. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, and keep those letters coming in. Just write us at podcast at babynames.com. Have a great week, Yorkie. See you on the flip side. I love you, and we love our big sisters, Sue and Kate. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. We are two wild and crazy guys. <laughs> and we love all our listeners out there. Thanks for making this such a hit show. International hit show, according to DJ Rick. Well, if he says it, it must be true. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.